Begin with German. Um, this is an uh, outline of my presentation. I will speak very shortly about a practical shield and ethics and how we actually understand that in the moment. Then uh, I will try to make some comparison of uh, dissertation based on continuum, weather problem continuum model. Then I will speak about the effect of the size ratio, which is <coughs> actually related also in the uh, transfer from small to the uh, uh, long plant region. Then I present uh, actually the, the uh, formula for it. Uh, unified model of preclosure and campus conclusions. Okay. Well, this is uh, maybe a long diagram where we understand now how the preclosure in a fatigue of long prex works. We have applied at the K, you have uh, some closure range that actually reduces the uh, the uh, stress, stress intensity range at the crack tip to be delta K effective. And you can see, of course, that this closure range has still three basic components in the long, but there are, here are three of them. Plasticity induced, which is usually more. Then roughness induced component, which is Important, very important, in the near threshold regime of long cracks, especially. And then you have uh, something like an oxide induced preclosure, but this is um, actually not so easy to say if yes, is, there is a closure or not, and it depends on many, many factors of distance from the outside. From the outside. So, actually, in a, just usually we, we can neglect this effect. Uh, to, work, uh, to respect to those two <coughs> closure efforts. Okay, and then actually, uh, say five years ago, we uh, with, with Reinhardt we just finished uh, a model that I will just try to present you here. And this model is able to uh, assess actually without practically any fitting parameters. The uh, components, the plasticity induced and roughness induced components of the closure, <coughs> because this component, which is called geometric shielding, because this is, a, this is actually in a correct way. This is actually at a correct or ahead of the crack tip, caused by deflections of the crack or branching, splitting of the crack. This can be actually in the ductile. Materials can be neglected this uh, it was shown also by another, maybe 20 years ago. That, that's due to the uh, another mechanism of, of, of fatty. This is this is important in a monotone fracture for in red material uh, for red materials, but this can be neglected. So you I will speak only about this Okay. Now let's let's look go to the uh, uh, dislocation based and continuum models with the parameter and now the first, I would like to speak about the stress case. So if you have uh, thin specimens, sheets, or thin points, so um, you, you have actually, in the crack weight, you have uh, two kinds of, uh, of a plasticity produced netting. It's a transfer, tra transversal netting. It's out, out of plane living, see? This is caused actually by this location here with just uh, have a Borges vectors uh, in a place perpendicular to the screen. These are marked here as a surface and the surface. And you have a, uh, this kind of in-plane or longitudinal lacking caused by those dislocation having a Borges vectors in the in the plane of the screen. And uh, actually, this lane produces a wedge. 
plastic wedge embedded in an elastic material, as an inclusion. And this wedge actually causes a premature closure of the right flanks. And this is actually the main reason for crack closure in the plane stress case. But you can see that these dislocations here, it's produced also a stress field near a crack field and along the crack lines. And this stress field is like this. You have a, say, closure component, sigma one y here. You have a shear stress along the crack lines, sigma x y. And you have also a component, sigma x x, which is not marked here because of lack of space. Like this, this is in this direction. So you have a rather complicated stress field here that produces actually both plasticity induced and roughness induced contributions to the closure caused by, by the switch. Now, well, um, if you compare, but maybe uh, just uh, should, one should emphasize it. This arrangement of dislocations is, is, is not just, uh, just uh, somehow postulated. This kind of dislocation arrangement comes from a physically based uh, modus of dislocation emission for the crack type when the crack propagates. This kind of <coughs> arrangement here are only so-called geometrically necessary dislocations. There are many other dislocations statistically distributed. But those dislocations, they have, they do not produce actually the stress field here because the air long range stresses are actually mutually cancelled. So you have here only the geometrical necessary dislocations. You can also, uh, in the 70s and 80s, there are many nice pictures of transmission electron microscopy produced and you could see such an arrangement of dislocations near the crack produced by emission of the crack tips. It's like a um, just inverse pileup. So this is this is actually a physical based uh, uh, picture. Now if you if you compare it to the continuous <coughs> make model that was actually introduced by by the Christopher James and, and, and Patterson others. So <coughs> you can see this picture. This is the uh, say uh, a shock inclusion plus inclusion. That it can do, can do the, the elastic matrix. So you can see that the stresses here that were postulated actually still have by the intuition yeah, here are in, were well in agreement qualitatively with this dislocation model. So it, it, it's good because because you know the dislocation models must you know be uh, in agreement of course with, with the continuum models. So this is this is okay. You have a shear stress, you have a Closure stress was stress like, uh, or, or say force like that. So so that's good. I apologize in my text I use the wrong figure. This is why. I use the figure for, for the continuum model for the closed crack, so sorry about it. I have a change. That's what I recognize. Very good. So just to the continuum. Uh, you have heard uh, yesterday, of course, that to those forces in this model can relate some stress intensity factors, the shielding factors. And you have here then a five parameters A, B, C, D, E that must be found by fitting the experiment, for example, in the photoelastic fringe patterns of polycarbon as the as it was made. Well, you know, in uh, with respect to this continuum world, now three say questions arise. The, the first question is how to assess the shielding factors in commercial materials. No, no, no. Maybe it's possible. Yeah. Then how to arrange the experiment for a plain strain case, which is 
practically even more important than you know, to enforce and so on. And then, in this moment, there is no possibility to separate or even access the uh, roughly induced pedagogical component, which might be very important in the, say, for the near, near threshold. Okay, so I will focus uh, on the plane strain case and actually more on the roughness induced pedagogical control. But I will discuss both classes of music in the frame of the dislocation test, more than that. Okay, I'm sorry I have to go. <laughs> have a okay, so. Let's go to the plane strain case. And, and in this case, oh sorry. In this case you can forget the, the transverse of making because of this is not allowed by definition. So we have you have only uh, this kind of of making. And uh, actually for uh, for uh, for a mathematical simplicity, you can, in this case, because the plastic zone is not so big in this case, you can actually replace the uh, more complicated arrangement of these locations by just the two strips, like that, with the effective density of these locations. And in that case, you can then compute or calculate nicely the stress field which is produced by this dislocation of the crack field. This is what I showed you before. And uh, so here the longitudinal lacking like that in plain neck is the only source of plasticity induced crack control. And this actually tending produces a prolapse of the mass near the crack front, so it produces a closure very close to the crack. Now, here, this is very schematic, but this, you know, moving of the mass to the crack tip, and the tilting, produced by this dislocation airflow, this is, this is actually a tilt boundary, you know, a tilt, tilt, you know, small angle, angle boundary. Uh, so, actually, deforms also the crack flags. So, actually, I, I don't know if I can show it here. So, actually, it, the, the crack flag, the geometry is like that. Here, it goes up, it is the vacancy here, up, and then here down. So, like something like that. Okay, and then, uh, so, you can you can do the uh, do actually uh, compute the stresses and you can you can somehow assess the uh, both components of plasticity induced and roughness induced machine. And this is the principle how to do that how to assess all the components. Now, if you have a symmetrical strips with uh, say towards the uh, crack plane, so. Both, on both sides, you produce the tilting and the surplus of the mass in the control. So this is the actual plasticity induced crack closure case. But if you have asymmetrical arrangement of these locations and the rough surface like that, not bigger than this, so you get a shear shift, neutral shear shift of the crack flanks, in this case, and this produces a long, so-called long-range roughness-induced crack closure. <laughs> now, we can ask, what is the uh, reason for asymmetry of the crack flanks? I will show you, I will discuss that. So, now, we have a roughness-induced crack closure effect. <laughs> this is caused by the misfit of microscopically rough crack flanks. And the micromechanism of that can be divided into two things. The long-range effect, I've shown you before, 
it's produced along the whole, whole, whole uh, along the uh, whole, practically all quite lines, and the show range, which is operating at a practical. And this is irre irreversible, no two and no three motion of deflected, of deflected uh, 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 parts of the crack front, ahead of the crack front and decline 24 seconds. And the necessary condition that was for it to have a roughness in this crack motion like this, say the physical condition, physically different condition, is the Asymmetry of this location configuration and the high irreversibility of this short range mechanism. And these both are fulfilled when you have a high values of so called size function. And this is the effect of so called size function. Actually, it, it was already uh, somehow discussed in the previous. In the previous uh, Presentation. Yeah. But <coughs> now, the search, what is the size ratio? The size ratio is ratio of make microstructure element, characteristic microstructure element. You can have a, this is, is which is actually connected with the, the barriers, with the highest barriers for the crack propagation. And uh, so you can have a great size as a highest barrier, this decisive barrier. Okay. If this size ratio, uh, just to the static plastic zone size, static plastic zone size, the static zone size they see it as a dislocation arrangement. This was a static one, not outside. And uh, if if your plus static plastic zone size embraces many grains, so I'm sorry for that. It should be much less than one. If the size ratio is much less than one, this size. The plastic zone size embraces many grains. Actually, you can forget uh, microstructure because there are no barriers. No, no? let's see. Yeah. But so, and there is no reason for an asymmetry of just the plasticity or anything. So, the reference induced enclosure in that case can be a long range, of course, but also a short range. It's easy. Now, on the other hand, if this size ratio is just equal or higher than one, the static plastic zone size is on, always embedded in, say, one grain on a, in a big, you know, particles of, of secondary phases, which can be a barriers, or, or other phase boundaries for the materials, whatever. So you always, you know, on the one side of the moving crack, you are blocked, you are you, you are blocking, and on the other side you have more space. So this always this always produces uh, asymmetry. So in that case, you can expect roughness in this composure to be developed. Okay. Now, actually, I got to the. Uh, uh, result of the unified model of the closure, but uh, you know, before I, I have to say something about the size ratio. The size ratio is really a very general parameter. It works not only in fatigue, it works also in brittle model and fracture. And this is, in that case, that's not a closure, of course. That's this is actually connected with the uh, geometrical shield. If you have a size ratio much less than one, you, you have a kind of, of say, ductile record in one of the And if you have this size ratio higher or comparable to one, you can expect, you know, uh, another, another kind, kind of fracture. That means intervenal fracture or, or cleavage. So and, and deflections. So that's very general ratio, and it actually means a gauge between a world of of continuum mechanical controlled crack propagation and a microstructural control crack propagation. So that's very important. Two minutes.
Yes, I come very soon to the room. Thank you. <laughs> and this is actually, if you make some just uh, calculations, you can actually uh, arrive to that. I'm oh, sorry, to that equation. And this is the k effective value as a function of that again cyclic ratio. And here you have uh, three terms. Shearing terms. This is a long range roughness induced, short range roughness induced, and plasticity induced. And you see that our model leads to the conclusion that the plasticity in this project that is actually a, a, a constant. That means that the plasticity in this project in a plain strain case is actually this is the, the, the ratio of delta k effective to delta k of if you wish a closure or opening to the maximum delta k is a constant and independent of the material so this is the actually the, the result and this equation reflects practically all the phenomena you can observe in the, in the uh, long federal range there are some of them if you keep the delta k constant, so you can see from that the delta k decreases. Oh, I'm sorry. Decreases, <coughs> decreasing cyclic ratio with increasing roughness of the crack class. This is an area roughness here, in the models is area roughness. Then with the increasing parameter eta, this is actually a para statistical parameter you, because I did not mention it, but you, you must take into account that the size ratio is a uh, just the statistically distributed value uh, uh, the crack from. You have uh, big grains in the material, you have very small grains. So you have to have some statistics. So if you, so this is actually the probability of finding an uh, element which produces a, uh, a size ratio effect and not at the crack from. This is from zero to one. And, and in this, in this, uh, in this uh, uh, parameter you have a, uh, you have a uh, microstructure distance, this size ratio mean size ratio uh, effect <coughs> uh, is included in this, this exponential function because we use a vibrant distribution. So with increasing this parameter mean from <coughs> 0 to 1, that means if you have a coarse grain, so of course microstructure. And if you go to the near threshold regime, so that again increases because of and roughly similar use the closure terms goes to zero, then go to zero. If you have a flat crack, of, of course, roughness is zero in a single crystal, of, of course, or for photoacid materials, maybe. And if this parameter goes to zero, that means actually in a mean fracture region in commercial materials, but which, is, which is a very bad message for, for those who are dealing with, uh, with uh, ultrafine grain materials. That <coughs> this shows that in ultrafine grain materials, the threshold value measures the value are low because of lack of reference in this And this was, of course, in the, we actually, we uh, predicted it two years, uh, five years or six years ago, so and, and during the three or four years, they measured the very low values. In a, in a okay, I go very, very. Uh, this is application of this model to various materials. From a measured value, you you get a, a delta k effective value. This is for this is for wide range of cyclic ratio here, and wide range of coarseness of the microstructure. From say grain sizes from micron to millimeters. So this you have a this is the these this are average values, you have a big scatter, high standard deviation. But if you compute using this model and very standard materials data, you need a year stress, you need a, a roughness of a crack fence, you need actually the size, the size, the size ratio, and the measure of the filtration, and, and that's it. So you see that these values, of course, are lower, but these standard deviations are very, very low in comparison to that. Because these values must be independent from cyclic ratio, must be independent 
on the cosiness of matter structure. Because this is an inherent resistance against or to the required node. The, the matrix, not of the microstructure of the psychic resource all of Okay? So I come to the conclusion. So um, I just try to present here <coughs> um, some Shelley model based on dislocations. And this model and the motor parameter continuum model, fortunately, give qualitatively identical practice. Here, here, that we think that the main advantage of the dislocation-based model, when compared to the multi-parameter continuum one, there's a clear, clear physical interpretation of, of shielding stress components for the stress field, Applica applicability to plane strain conditions. Prediction of reference induced spectral level and microstructural effects, which is impossible to do with a continuum approach. And easy application to engineering materials using standard materials data as yield strength, mean brain size, or mean characteristic distance, metallographical cut, roughness of crack flanks or structure surfaces, no problem to measure. No? And this is actually one fitting close, but this is actually not fitting close stuff, the critical size ratio, which must be very close to 0.5. And just an acknowledgement, main collaborators, Reinhardt here sitting, and my colleague Chandra, and five collaborators, more or less with experimental things like that, some project. And last slide. <laughs> this is a book that appeared last year, and in this book, you can find uh, actually more detail about, about the model and many other things. So, so <laughs> okay, questions, comments? Neil. Well, I've always liked dislocation models, and I must acknowledge that uh, some years ago I read one of Reinhardt's papers about the plane straight, and he got me thinking the way I start to think about this. But you've ended up with the model for the threshold, which is fine. That's where roughness is maximized if you get any problems in crack growth rate. Uh, and you've replaced the stress field with a derived parameter, which is your roughness parameter, which is going to be less important in the Paris regime, etc. Yeah, it shows the model. So, I mean, I'm not arguing with your, idea, <coughs> your ideas, but it seems to me that sitting with the stress field, you can do more with it in terms of overall crack growth rate prediction. We have a DIC version, so we can deal with metals. We can't do plain strain, I agree, we can only do surface measurements. Um, but maybe we should talk and work together a little bit. <laughs> uh, I, sorry, the last. Talk he afterwards. Wants to talk. Well, okay. He wants to talk afterwards. Yes, <laughs> yeah. yes so I completely agree. With what. This so is the conference here. So let's move on. Great. Uh, well, perhaps maybe a little bit of the light side. So I've been listening to presentation by Vasudevan and Satananda for the last five years and they use the same arguments that dislocations and physics and they conclude that there is no closure <laughs> based on the same. So <laughs> it would be nice if you could talk to each other. <laughs> because I, I am generally a little bit uh, confused. One of the things which I always have a problem when we start with this location, and then after a few words we jump to continuum mechanics. This is like jumping from a really very miniature world to a high one. But, but yes, right. my serious more question is this. Always when I listen to, to, to presentations you know, for, uh, concerning threshold and effective delta K, I never see that you calculate what is the effective K max associated with effective delta k. Because what it means that if delta threshold effect is independent on R ratio, it means that you have threshold at a different k max, it means you have different monotonic plastic zones at the threshold. And I'm not sure whether it is really true. It would be nice if sometimes could, you know, people who present that are K, K effective, they could present also what is the K max effective associated with the delta K effect. 
But this is actually no problem. Yeah. That there's no problem with that. Because if you have a R ratio, so that the K minimum is above the project level. Yeah, but so you, you, you have actually the K max threshold of delta A max, which is which like up the, the, and the actually should not depend just, on the R ratio. Yeah, just, and this is not true. If you just manipulate K minimum on it due to threshold, it and means you are at high K max is the effective K-max, when there are evidence shown, and I was one of them showing, that actually K-max is also affected by the history. So you see, you, you yes. have to assume, you yes, don't you assume right. that the right K-max is equal to effective K-max. Yes, you are right, actually. But you, you mean, if you are in a, say, a uh, cyclic ratio range, minus 1, say, to 0.5, you know, so in that range, the delta k max is not too much of that. But if you go up, that means higher than 0 0.5, 0 0.6, say, there is no problem at all. But in that case, you have a high, usually high k max. And this high k max, if you go up with that, so it's environmentally effective because you open actually the lattice for hydrogen. Therefore, many times, in the last five years, you know, discussed that actually it would be nice to to uh, to have to, to do experiments with R ratio higher than open says and you have a delta KF and, and nothing to do. But this is not true. Because in that regime, in that Pmax regime, if you R ratio, uh, cyclic ratio is above 0.6, say, so in that regime, the Kmax when you start to be influenced by. So, so I'm going to uh, stop the discussion there because we're, we're running over time and, and maybe you two can, can carry yeah. on in, uh, in the coffee break. Uh, let's thank our speaker for his uh, presentation. <laughs>